Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video by me, Just Got Leo. Welcome back, love to see you, love to have you. Please do stay and stick around for a little while. Uh, while you do that, please subscribe to the channel and also follow me on my social media, love to have you. So I'm here today and I'm going to be filming a video on breakups and we're gonna talk about breakups and we're gonna talk about what you can do to move on, move past a, uh, terrible breakup anyway all, all breakups are terrible right they're not the greatest feeling in the world we're going to talk about that but also at the same time i'm going to read some of your questions scenarios all of that and respond to them with regards to breakups i put this on my community tab a couple of weeks ago and i've only gotten the chance to film this video now so we're going to get into it before i get started i really would love to tell you guys if I sound a little bit different, it is because I am sick with the flu. Uh, last week was one of the worst weeks that I ever had this whole entire year. If anything could go wrong last week, it went wrong. All right, so this is a really, really difficult one for me to film because a lot of the time, I do not really talk much about my breakups online or my relationships online, but I got a lot of questions and uh, requests on Instagram and on YouTube to talk about breakups and what one can do to get through or get past a terrible breakup. I mean, we all know breakups are terrible, all of them. It doesn't matter how it happens, what caused the breakup, but it's terrible because hearts are broken and people have to move on from a life that you have created with somebody. So it's really, really difficult to get through any kind of breakup. And I'm gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna give you some of my tips as to what I did, but also at the same time, I might also share a little bit about what happened <laughs> with my breakup. A lot of you guys actually um, know that I went through a breakup last year because I spoke about it uh, last year, I think around this time, actually. No, I think it was around, uh, we're in April now, I think it was around February, March, and it was a tough time in my life, okay? It was a very, very tough time in my life. I feel like when you've been with somebody for so long, you integrate so much of your life and their life into your space so you then become a unit right you're no longer this individual who's just going through life by yourself you know living your best life chat you know you're just doing the most for you but now you have somebody in your life and you have this person that you you know contact every day and you talk to them and you love them and you let them into your heart and into your home and into your space and into your family life and into your friends life and all of that so it's really really difficult to um, have all of that come to an end and going through a breakup sort of also feels like a grieving process it, it literally takes it all out of you especially if you are in a relationship with somebody that you really love and a lot of the time sometimes you still love that person even when you are going through the breakup so it's really difficult it's a really difficult space to be in and to go through and to get over at the end of the day. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, for me, my breakup, <clears throat> child, let me just have a sip of my tea before I talk about that one, child. Um, without getting into too much detail about my breakup from last year, my breakup happened because there was infidelity, okay? I got cheated on and it was a really, really difficult time for me because when you are cheated on it's not even about oh my god like it's that there's that initial anger there's that initial heartbreak there's that initial like how do you do this to me whatever whatever but then what follows after that is the questioning of yourself like what am I lacking why would somebody do this to me and and you know at the end of the day you will know you know that it's not what you are lacking it's all about them and not necessarily about you right what they did to you is all about them and not necessarily you but you can't help it's it's a human thing to do you can't help but think that what did I do? What did I say? Where did our relationship change? What, um, what is it that I'm lacking that she has that I don't have? What is it? Uh, and 
it's really hard because you tap into parts of yourself that you never thought you had, that you never knew you had. It's really, really difficult. And you have to question bits of yourself, wondering to yourself that what could I have done better? I'm here to tell you that there is nothing. There is nothing. Let me tell you, if you go through a breakup, okay, and somebody breaks you, and you are the one who has to walk away from the breakup because of infidelity or something like really along those lines, right? Because there's various reasons why people break up and that's not why we're here, okay? But I'm just saying that if it's a case of, you know, you've been cheated on once, twice, multiple times or anything like that, it's not you. I need you to understand. It is not you. It's the other person. Everything that has happened up until that point where you have decided to walk away has nothing to do with you. You are not there when the other person decides to go cheat or you are not there when they make that decision. And one thing you need to always remember is that when they do make that decision, they know very well between right and wrong. They know very well that what they are doing is going to hurt you should you find out because sometimes people don't find out and then people continue cheating and then they find other people and they do whatever at the end of the day they know very well that what they are doing could potentially hurt you it could potentially damage you it could potentially bring into question so many things about the relationship but it could also make you question yourself and could make you question your value and your worth and i am here to tell you that 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 ain't it, sis. That ain't it. It's got nothing to do with you. When somebody chooses to walk away from you, no matter what the reason of the breakup may be, if somebody is going through a difficult time, a difficult mental and emotional time, and they choose to let you go because they want to work on themselves, again, that has nothing to do with you. If you're going to do it to someone else, it has nothing to do with them. If somebody cheats on you, nothing to do with you. I really need you to understand that before we get into this video because I feel like a lot of the time we are so quick to blame ourselves. We're so quick to look at ourselves and our trajectory of our life within that relationship and what we could have possibly done wrong or what we could have said wrong or whatever is nothing. Let me tell you, is nothing. So you've just found out what you found out, right? You've just found out that, you know, this is not for me. I need to go. Sometimes you don't even want to go, but you need to make a decision for you. What you need to understand is that it is about you. This here moment is about you. It's got nothing to do with them. The moment you decide to break up with someone, the moment you decide that it's best to walk away, that moment, from that moment, that instant, it's about you and it's got nothing to do with them. This is the moment where you enter a stage of grief when it comes to your breakup because you are going to be crying over what they did. You are going to be crying over the loss of this unit. A breakup is literally like a death. If you think about it, it's a death of the unit. It's a death of that person, even though that person is still walking the earth. Okay, this person could still be walking the same town, they're in the same town, they're in the same office as you because you decided to have an office romance, they're in the same church as you, they're in the same school as you, this person is still around and you could possibly see them regularly from time to time. You guys might have the same group of friends. This person is somebody who is still alive but you are now mourning their death, hypothetically. Okay, you are mourning their death, you are mourning the death of a relationship. So the moment you choose to break up starts the grieving process. You're grieving all the moments where you made promises to one another, all the moments where you, you know, formulated these uh, memories and times and places and everything that, 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 that you did and shared with that person, all the goals that you wanted to achieve as a couple going forward, whether you guys have talked about marriage, whether you guys have talked about children, whether you guys have talked, about, it doesn't matter what it is that you talked about you are now in this place where you are grieving the loss 
of all those memories that you had built together, all the conversations mm -hmm. that you had together. So it is a really tough period of time where you are just going through a mournful period and you need to allow yourself to go through this space. Okay. Point number one is you have to allow yourself to feel what you are feeling. You have to allow yourself to go through the breakup. You have to allow yourself to feel what you need to feel so that you can get to the next stage of what you need to do to move forward from the breakup. We are human after all. There is no way that you're not going to feel the pain, the loss that comes with the breakup, the pain that comes with, you know, somebody letting you go or you going um, or you leaving the relationship because they have done something to hurt you. You have to allow yourself to feel it. One thing you're never going to do when you're going through a breakup with somebody is just immediately go, you know what? It's over. I'm done. If you love that person, there is no way. You have to go through a breakup in order to get over, over it and get through to the other side. You cannot just skip one stage and be like, oh, breaking up. Oh, moving on. What about this here, this here little moment here? You have to go through it in order to get over it and to get on with your life. So this can be done in a number of ways, okay? Now, some of these ways are not healthy at all, but I'm going to mention them because I, I did this. I did this. Actually, one of them is just really not the healthiest way to get uh, through a breakup. But I'm going to mention it anyway because I'm truthful and I'm honest on this channel and I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, but I'm not going to advise that you do this first. Cry it out. Cry it out. Cry, my baby girl. Cry. Let it all go. Scream, shout, break things. You know, I have a, a really bad habit of breaking things when I am really broken. When I'm really hurt, when I'm really upset, I like to take, don't do this, okay? Don't do this. But I like to take like an old glass or an old plate or whatever and I go outside and I smash it against the wall. That's why there are those rooms, you know, when you're watching things like Real Housewives or whatever and they all go to, you know, they have an activity and they go to this room where you can just smash things as a great way of getting out anger and hurt and sadness and grief. That shit works, okay? <laughs> Excuse me. That works. And for me, it worked so well because I smashed a couple of things when I was going through the breakup because I was hurt and I wanted to smash something without damaging my house or damaging my phone or doing any of that. So maybe take up um, cry, but also take up an activity where you can go somewhere and actually smash things. That helps. That helps. Cry, spend time with your family members, spend time with your friends. But when I say spend time with your family members, spend time with your friends, only to a point in which you can allow. If you feel like you want to be alone and you want to spend time alone, then that's what you should do. Do what your heart allows. Do what your mind and your space will allow in that time. You do not have to force yourself to uh, be around people just so that you don't have to think about that person. So do what your heart and your mind allows at the time. Now, something that I did share, that is, it's not good at all, okay? Something that I did is I drank. And I do not advise that you do this, but a lot of the time I was trying to get out of my head when I was going through my breakup. I was trying to get out of my head. I was trying to do something, anything that would stop me from calling him. I was trying to do anything that would stop me from texting him, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anything that would get me out of my head and my thoughts because my thoughts were dark. They were really dark, child. I was thinking about a lot of things, blaming myself in some instances, uh, blaming him in a lot of instances, hating on him and all of that. And I felt like, you know what, the only way that I can get out of my head is to actually just drink and go to bed. I do not advise that you do this because I feel like when you are inebriated, yes, it's fun in the time, drink, sleep, wake up the following morning, the hurt and the pain will still be there. So it's not really advisable to uh, 
you know, find yourself in a drinking stupor or anything like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But spend time with friends, spend time with family, journal, write things down. If I can tell you the power that comes with writing things down, I wrote a lot of things down. I have a note in my phone that is written late night thoughts. And I remember sending some of my friends screenshots of what I had written. And in those notes, I wrote letters to him. I wrote letters to myself where I was swearing at him. You know, literally just how could you do this to me? How could you do this to us? How could you do that? Da, 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 da. And then I wrote letters to myself where I was affirming myself, where I was just like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You're a great person. You deserve the best. You do da 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 da. This is a moment where I was allowing myself to feel what I wanted to feel. And it was also a moment where I um, lived and breathed. Breathed? Yes. It was also a moment where I lived and breathed the emotions that came with being in a heartbreak situation. So allow yourself to feel what you want to feel. Point number two for me is take control of the situation, right? So you've now gone through a point where you've hurt, you've cried it out, you've spent time with family, friends, you have spent time by yourself, you have thought about it, you've cried about it, you have um, been angry and you've thrown shit across the room and you've not across the room, child. Go outside, do all those things outside. But you've cried about it, you've done all these things. Now it's time to take control of your situation. Now it's time to take control of your life. This is the moment where you need to make the realization and the promise to yourself that that's it. I've cried about it. Now I need to take control of my situation and of my life. This is about me. This person is already gone now. They're out of the situation. They're out of the moment. This is the moment where I need to consider myself and think about myself and what I need to do to aid me in the process of healing. So this was the exact moment where for me, I had to let some things go. I needed to stop thinking about this person. I needed to stop thinking about what I did wrong, right? I needed to stop literally degrading <clears throat> excuse me i needed to stop literally degrading myself for the sake of trying to understand why this breakup happened i needed to stop talking speaking negatively to myself regarding this breakup and i needed to remember who the if i was this was the point where i needed to take control of the situation it's done it's over. The breakup has happened. I have cried and cried and cried, but I refuse to wallow in the situation any longer. This is the point where I need to move forward with my life. This is the point where I need to consider all the things that have been done to me, but what I'm going to do to change and bring in some sunshine into my life. Very, very important to take control of the situation so that you can aid yourself in the healing process. How do you want to heal for you? So this is the point where you can write out all the things that you need to do. Take trips if you can. Spend more time with friends and family. Try not to live in the memory of who you and him or her or they, them were. You have to try and move forward because at this point you need to realize that if I don't do it for myself, what happens to my life? I can't continue to drown in this situation. Whereas this person, maybe at this point you still have them on Instagram and you haven't blocked them and you still have them on WhatsApp and whatever. And you can see that this person is living their life. They're moving on. They're moving forward. So why are you still waiting? Even though some days are going to be different than others, we do need to understand that some days are going to be different than others, but even just getting up on one day out of five days, just getting up, making your bed, pouring yourself a cup of tea, making sure you eat something, take control of the situation that you are in before the situation takes control of you. Now you started you're starting to get about your daily chores. You're starting to focus on other things. You're starting to smile a little bit more. But one thing you haven't done is blocked this person. 
you haven't deleted, you haven't, so you still have access to this person. Now I'm talking about somebody that you do not see every day. If you work with this person, it's a little bit difficult. If you go to school with this person, that's a completely different scenario. But if you don't, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't, this is the moment where you establish boundaries. Now don't have anybody fool you. Do not do this thing where you're like, nah, I'm not going to block them because I want them to see me thriving. I want them to see me living my best life. I am great. I want them to see that I have moved on. I am looking good. I'm going to the gym. I'm doing this so that they can see it on my Instagram and my Twitter and this and this. Not necessary. Not necessary. Whoever is going to tell you that is lying to you. You need to establish boundaries. Boundaries are so important for you to be able to move forward. Because if this person still has some sort of access to you and you have some sort of access to them, trust you me at some point, one night on a drunken night, you're going to call this person. I did it. I did it multiple times. I did it where I would call and be like, why did you do this? Why did da, 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 da? I was broken, okay? And I understand that at some point you are so hurt that all you want to do is just hear their voice. All you want to do is just give them a hug. All you want to do is just, just rock up at their house wearing nothing but fishnet stockings and this, 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 and have sex with them in the hopes that maybe you can reconnect and bound and bond together and all of that and suddenly you're back together. Dangerous. Do not play that game. Do not play that game. Let this person go by establishing boundaries for yourself. You need to remind yourself why you have walked away from this relationship or why they chose to walk away from you. And if they chose to walk away from you, then you need to know that I matter. I should matter enough to somebody that they wouldn't want to walk away from me, no matter how bad things get. Okay, but sometimes that person is walking away from you because it's a situation about them and not necessarily you. Okay, but you need to establish boundaries. You must block. You must delete. You need to get to this point where you are starting to remove pictures. You're starting to remove emails. You're starting to remove memories of that person that are on your phone, that are on your laptop, that are in your house. Maybe you might have items of clothing from this person. This is the point where you start to establish boundaries. You need to let this person go. And you need to let them go. You've already let them go physically. But you need to let them go emotionally. Mentally, spiritually, they've got to go. Because it doesn't help you in any way, shape, or form to keep their stuff around, to keep their contacts on your phone, right? It doesn't help you in any way. Block Andwana. Delete her baby. Because as difficult as this may sound to you right now, what I'm saying, it is very important for you to be able to move forward. That letting go of what once was is helpful for you to move forward in the healing process. Delete Block anything that is in connection with that person. Siblings, friends, colleagues, yada, yada, yada. I remember there was a time where we had gone through the breakup and I got a call from a colleague of his telling me, asking me if I know where he is. It was a Monday morning. If I know where he is because he hasn't reported to work that morning. And I was just like... The Katleo in me was just like, oh, let me maybe call and find out if he's okay, blah, blah. None of my business. Literally none of my business. You need to let things go. So this is where you are fighting for you. So establishing boundaries is you fighting for you and saying that I deserve better than this. I need better than this. I am a great person. I am worthy and I am of value and I deserve better than this. Move. Establish the boundaries, gents. Establish them. If you need to cut them off of uh, Instagram, if you need to cut them off of Twitter, if you need to cut them off of whatever, cut them off. Cut it. Block and delete. After you establish these boundaries, do me one big favor. Be kind to yourself. Because this is going to be a really tough time for you. It's been a really tough time to, for you. Okay? Um, so point number four is, after you've established these boundaries, 
after you've gone through the hurt and after you have um, taken control of the situation, do me one big favor and be kind to yourself. This is the moment you need to be the most kindest to yourself. If you're going to eat and binge and this and this, be kind to yourself. Allow yourself to do all those things. If you're going to cry some days and not cry some days and lose your shits the next days and drink more than you normally do and uh, be snappy towards other people and all of that, be kind to yourself to know that, you know what, I'm going through a tough time. But if you're going to change your attitude towards others, that is no excuse. If you're going to be snappy to other people, and you don't realize it comes on and then you do it, also remember to apologize, please. Please, because the people that are in your life are there to support you and help you get through this difficult time. But you also need to be kind to yourself. You need to accept the fact that this is what has happened, but I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. And I need to be able to be kind to myself so that I can move forward. Be kind to yourself, please. It's as simple as... Treating yourself, self-love, self-awareness. you know, awareness. Be aware of where you are in your life right now, but be kind to yourself in that process. So treat yourself if you can. Treat yourself, read, go to the spa, you know, spend time with friends, <coughs> excuse me, go out, enjoy, but be kind to yourself. Allow yourself to go through all these things without feeling guilty because you do deserve it. You do deserve it, which I feel is the most important one when you've gone through a breakup. The final one that I feel is most important is affirm yourself. This is the point where you need to remind yourself who the F you are. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You need to remind yourself, or yay, ninja aka Mina. Mina, I'm the talk of the talks of the talks. Mina. Yeah, I understand. You need to remind yourself that you are worthy. You are of value. You deserve better than what you have just come through and come past and the moment that you have been in. You are love. You will be loved. Okay? You speak love into your life. You have to affirm yourself. You have to remind yourself that I am good. I am a good person who deserves a good person, not somebody who's going to cheat on you and somebody who's going to make you feel like crap and somebody who's going to have other people disrespect you, you know, and all of that. You deserve better. I am love. I am value. I am worth. This is the point where you become Mary Jane and you write down these affirmations and you put them somewhere in your car, in your on, in, on your bathroom mirror like Mary Jane does it. Put them somewhere in your house, on your fridge. Remind yourself who you are so that you can see them each and every single day. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So that you can see them each and every single day so that you are reminded, oh, you know what? Mina, 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 me, I'm going to sleep. Me, me, me I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, 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 down and out. Because of a breakup, me, never, could never be me. Me, I'm going to rise. And you are going to rise. And you are in that moment where you are rising. And let me tell you something about the moment you start affirming yourself and reminding yourself who the F you are. Everything about you, your aura and your energy screams it. It becomes so loud that it's just like, what a wow, what a wow, who is this here gal? Okay, be that person for yourself. You deserve to affirm yourself and remind yourself who the F you are. You are worthy, you have value. You mean more. There are people who love you for who you are, bro. Just because some people are gonna sit here and do his intensive snacks and whatever at your expense has nothing to do with you. You matter more to yourself. It's your time, it's your moment, and it's your time to shine. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say.